Hello and welcome, my name is Tobal. Thank you for joining me for another Kenshi tutorial video. In this video, I'd like to cover some of the Kenshi user interface, as well as some of the basic controls and commands in the game. If you're already pretty comfortable with these options in the game, you might want to go ahead and skip ahead to another video in the playlist. Otherwise, please enjoy and join me as we explore some of the basics of Kenshi. So I'm looking at a basic squad, and I've just paused the game by pressing space. This is my squad that I've been uh, building up over time. And as you can see, we've all got these different names here, and they're all hanging out in the middle of uh, the game. I won't tell you where we are. I don't want to spoil any locations for you. I really want you to explore those on your own. By the way, if you don't see the names above your character's heads, that might be an option you'd like to enable because it's a personal preference. But I like to see who I'm selecting and looking at and also where they're at. So if there's a big fight, I know where my characters are. I'm going to hit Escape. And under General, there is this option here that says Show Character Names. I'm going to go ahead and check that. That's how you make sure that the names are above the heads. So the user interface is broken out into a couple different parts. This is kind of like a stats panel. This is going to be your squad panel. We have a small menu bar here and then more uh, configuration options. And I'll cover each of these here in depth. So the first thing we're going to look at is the stats panel. As you can see, I'm switching through characters here, by the way, by pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the menu key, or excuse me, on the keyboard. This is corresponding with their position in the squad. If you want to select larger groups of people, you can click a box and drag it around your group. Or, alternatively, you can press the tilde key. This will select all of the current members of the currently highlighted squad. So here, we actually have two separate squads. To change between those squads quickly, we can press Tab, and then you could press 1 to highlight the person in the other squad. Now, Fido actually is at a different location on the map, so we're going to go back to our current squad and focus on them for the moment. So, on this panel, what are we looking at under the stats? The first thing we're seeing is our name and our faction. So, anyone you click on, you'll be able to see that information. I think I can actually find a couple folks over here. So if I click on one of these random people, I find that they're part of the dust, they're a dust boss, and they're part of the dust bandits faction. We also can see their stats, what they're up to, and the state of their character's health. So I'm going to double tap the number one to jump back to my character. So state is the rough estimate of their health. You might see normal. If they're very injured, it might say injured. If they're about to die, it might say critical or dying. The goal is kind of what the command they're following right now. So we have a move order that we're following because I just gave them a move order. The encumbrance is how much, I suppose it's a calculation of uh, either like strength times what have you, basically how much, what percentage your character is over, encumber over encumbered. So if I pick up one of my other party members, you'll see that I'm encumbered at 61%. This is going to affect the rate at which I run and do other actions, as well as it actually makes me hungrier because you're working a lot harder. So I'll go ahead and put this person down. Sorry, Thumper. Thanks for being our dummy there. So what else can we see here? Now, we see attack, defense, strength, dex, toughness, and dodge. These are kind of more traditional stats in an RPG. Attack and defense directly influence the uh, combat skill of your character. So a character with high attack might often get a lot of strikes in if you're fighting hand uh, hand or weapon, melee weapon. Defense is just the opposite. How well you can defend against people who are attacking you with a sword or melee uh, hand to hand. Strength and dexterity filter into or figure into the calculations for doing damage to a character. I believe dexterity also influences how well you fire your ranged weapon. Uh, ranged weapons are a little bit new in Kenshi, and so they've only been in, in the last couple updates. So I don't know as much about those as I do with other items. Toughness affects a couple different things. If we hover over any of these, by the way, you see the information box above the squad name giving us more information. So if we hover over dex, uh, excuse me, toughness, we see that it improves or affects a couple different things. The health KO point, wound degeneration speed, and damage resistance. Uh, the KO point and wound regeneration, I'm going to go into here in just a little bit. What I'm going to do is set up a scenario where I've taken some damage, and I can explain how some of the different things look when you're taking damage and healing. I don't want to do it right now and make you just imagine it. I'd rather set it up so you just look and see how it looks right away. 
dodge is another stat that directly affects your ability to basically dodge an attack. Now this up arrow here, if we click on this, we expand to see a little bit more information about our character. The XP settings here, the Athletic, Strength, Toughness, XP, this is basically the rate at which you skill up in those three things. And they're affected by a couple different items. Uh, I won't go into those too much right now. I will have a video about what are some optimal ways, and you know, you can read into that and read Grindy, uh, to increase your character stats. We will definitely have a video about maxing your character stats out at some point in the future. But for now, just realize that these affect, or these represent, the rate at which you're gaining experience in those areas. Your run speed is your overall speed, of course, so if you are encumbered, you'll run slower. If you have a lot of armor on, you'll run slower. However, if you're very strong, and you have a very high maximum encumbrance limit, uh, you'll be able to kind of just, just shrug it off. Your encumbrance basically won't affect you as much because you'll be a little bit stronger and able to work and run under a heavier load. So part of designing and building up an efficient squad is building up a squad that has a good amount of encumbrance because, not encumbrance, but the limit of what their encumbrance is. So they can push through that part of being overwhelmed or over, uh, overburdened by heavy weights. As you can see right here, Thumper's running very slowly carrying Tobol, but if we were to continue to run her around for the next five hours, she would build up athletics and strength points, and then that encumbrance rating would go down because she doesn't feel it as much because she's stronger. Okay, we'll put him down. Thank you, Tobol, for being the dummy this time around. So we've covered uh, very briefly a couple things on this panel. Hunger rate, by the way, is just the rate at which you're currently experiencing hunger. These options here represent different areas of your character's body and what the current status of that either limb or that piece of body is. So your overall blood is how much blood you have in your system. Uh, this is your head, chest, stomach, of course, and then your different limbs. These can take damage directly, and they do in fact get damaged directly when you start having combat. Again, I'm going to skip ahead here in just a little while and show you what this looks like when you're in the middle of your battle. I've already kind of explained the squad screen, so this is basically anyone that you have in your squad. And I'm going to show you real quick how to adjust your squads. So in this vertical menu, you have a few different options. And since we're looking at the squad menu, let's go to the squad panel. I'm going to pull up the squad panel. And you can see here that we've got the two squads that represent the two tabs, the unworthy and the pupper squad. So if we make any changes to this, it immediately shows up in the tab below. So if you'd rather have your squads broken up into something like Alpha and Bravo, you can do that. Or sometimes what I like to do, especially when I start getting a lot of characters, is separate them into, we'll say, the Explorers group and maybe the Home Defense group. So the folks who stay at home and defend the base and work at the base. You can move characters between squads, uh, squads rather, by just clicking and dragging them around. This is also how you can rearrange the order of your squad. Just note that sometimes the character icons will look a little bit funky until you change out of the tabs. So if we wanted Heft to be right next to Tobal, if we want Heft to be our number two go-to person, we can keep moving people around. Sorry, the game froze up just a bit there. And then we can move them back. And if you notice under the Explorers tab at the bottom, Teft, or Heft rather, is now the number two slot. So that's the very, very basics on organizing your squad. You can create new squads by hitting the uh, squad, add squad button. You'll see that we have the redeemed three. You can have as many squads, I believe, as you want. It's been a bit, it's been a while since I've really made more than a few squads. So I've never tested the upper limit of the squads. However, the base limit of how many characters you can have in your faction starts at 30. Now there's different things that can affect that. I know there is a mod, and really I relied on a mod to change that all the way up to 255. This right here, uh, this is the amount of squads, uh, NPCs, and okay, so this is actually not your squads. So maybe that is a set hard number until you can get a mod that changes it in the settings files. And there is a wonderful mod out there that increases your party size up to 255, I think, or, or even higher. And I just don't know if it's ready for 1.0's release yet. So I'll probably be bringing that into my first Let's Play coming up here soon. So we've roughly covered the squad screen. So we're going to continue on past the menu for the moment and take a look at these settings here. This is the configuration that each character has. So let's click on Tobal for example. You can tell each character, either as a group or individually, 
to behave in a certain way. So these are kind of the default behaviors or current settings. So for example, if we wanted Tobal to sneak around, I just selected him and chose sneak, and he's going to start sneaking around. This is showing us that the blue represents that he's not visible to anyone, and the light represents how much light is currently on your character's location. So it is in the middle of the night here, so there's not a whole lot of light at all, and so we're pretty good in terms of stealth. Also, keep in mind, over here on the information panel, this bottom line will change to whatever most represents what you're currently doing. So because we're trying to sneak around right now, it's showing us what our stealth stat is. So this line here will try to be a little flexible and show you the most useful information based on what you're doing. I'm going to select the whole squad and click sneak, and now everyone goes into sneaky mode, except hand, because I think we've accidentally left hand in another squad. Sorry about that hand. Let's bring you back up and delete that other squad. If you notice that we have a bunch of people following one order, but hand is not. So what you can do is select everyone and click the order a couple times. So sometimes when you do this, it might turn off the order for everyone, but when you do it again, everyone it will include will have that order. So hand was left out, but by doing that we've kind of reset the order so everyone's following the same order. Okay. So right now, everyone currently has their jobs enabled, and they will use ranged weapons if they have ranged weapons equipped. We really don't want everyone to use ranged weapons. However, not everyone really has one anyways. Currently, only Thumper has a crossbow. So we are going to set Thumper to ranged. Jobs are interesting. Jobs are a way to set a passive behavior in Kenshi. So when your character is not doing something and they become aimless or idle, they will start, uh, start trying to do the jobs in order of their place in your queue. It's a bit hard to show you jobs without having some devices set up in a base, um, but just realize that you can in fact order your people to, for example, uh, work on the iron mine. So you could have them mining whenever they're not doing anything, they'll try to mine. You also can have someone working the farm. So whenever they're not doing anything, they'll start to work a farm and harvest the good. So we'll, we'll kind of go into that more in depth under the base building guide in our tutorial videos. Right now we've got a couple things. I have operate machine here. This is actually because I had everybody uh, picking up rocks way down here, which is kind of out of range now. So that order is no longer valid. I'm going to click the X to remove it. Tobal and a couple other people do have jobs as medics. So if one of us were to get injured, the others, whoever would number one have the job of a medic, and also have a medic kit on them, like for example Heft, would start to try to medic that person or medic themselves. You can set these orders by shift clicking, shift and then right clicking something. So if we had, and we, we don't really don't have too good of examples here, and I definitely will get into this later once we have a, um, a base set up. But for example, we can set this with medic by shift left clicking. Let me remove the order first. Shift left, left clicking will assign that as a permanent job to that person. It's left clicking when it's in the menu here. It's actually shift right clicking if it's on an object. So if I had a well right next to me, I could shift right click it and then I would put use the well as a job and it would be a permanent job that our characters would try to do. That's the rough explanation of jobs. And I know it's a lot better if I could show you with everything right there, but I wanted to try to do a really quick overview because really jobs aren't going to be super useful for you until you start having a base with the exception of the medic command. Again, shift medic, we'll put that there. Medics will prioritize defending themselves and attacking unless they you put them on passive and they're basically out of the fight. And I'll show you an example of that here in just a bit as well. Block, hold, and passive. Block will make your character only block incoming attacks. They will not try to respond and counter and follow up with their own aggressive attacks. This could let you do a couple things. One, if you want a character to focus on building up their defense skill, you could have them go into a block mode. The other thing is if you know a character doesn't have that great of attack skills or you just want them to focus on surviving for a minute while everyone else finishes off one enemy and then comes to rescue them, you can put the block skill on. This nets them a 20 increase to the, the, to the defense skill. As you see over here, it's actually a flat 20 boost. So this is huge, especially if you have some level of block already. Your character can become like an impenetrable wall and really hold off a couple, good amount of attacks. Hold will make your character not proceed with any job 
or reaction they have. Hold will have them stay in place. Passive will have your character ignore any aggression towards them. Um, I should take that back. Normally, if your characters are hanging out together and everyone is just, you know, not passive or not holding, if someone tries to attack your group, everyone will respond and try to fight back. If one of these characters is on passive, though, that character will not respond to the aggression. They will defend themselves, however, if someone comes off and tries to attack them directly. Taunt is something I've never really seen in action, and I don't know if it still works. It's, it's something that's been there for quite a few patches. Taunt is basically what it says. It's going to try to make your character uh, more aggressive and more of a better target than others. So if you have one character who's just excelling at combat, who's really well geared, who has really good stats, then you want to have them on Taunt so they can bring more enemies to them and leave the uh, your rest of your squad maybe to outnumber and fight the remaining foes. Okay, so I think we've covered most of these. Um, sneak, of course, is by itself It's if you want to sneak around a city. Prospect is more along the lines of base building, so I'm not going to get into it too much, but as you see here, our character just took an, an, basically a prospecting area or a prospecting uh, attempt at this local area. So it tells us what resources are in this area, but keep in mind, our character is not a very good prospector, so he's very zoomed in. In fact, I think this iron is literally like three steps over here. So if we prospect again, we should be right on top of that green spot. Okay, not so much, but it is still pretty close by. Let's see how far that is. Oh, we have to move the camera for that to take effect. Sorry, it's not the character. Oh, there's an iron mine right there. I can actually show you what I meant by the jobs part by shift right clicking, and this character will now start to mine this resource when he's got nothing going on. So we'll get into prospecting more down the road as well when we start to look for a base to build in a tutorial video. This icon here represents your current character speeds. I normally don't change this all that much because for the most part it doesn't uh, matter too much, although one useful setting is this. This setting means your characters will only run as fast as the slowest person in their current order group. So if we make all these folks run down this hill, and, okay, here's a better example. Let's pick someone up. Bard, I picked you up. So as you can see, if we just order a couple of these folks separately, let's go running down the hill. You can see how that group was obviously much faster than Tobol because Tobol is encumbered. If I were to group everyone up and have this setting here, which is like a shadow, everyone will run at the pace of their slowest character, which is Tobol. This is really good if you want to keep squads together over long distances when you might have one or two slower running members of your party, or you're in a trade caravan and you want them to be all nice and clumped up to defend and help each other. Otherwise, you can change these settings to a walk uh, or to like a jog. I've never really changed anything other than to have this on the shadow mode. Uh, you may have seen this changing as I pause the game. This is, of course, your speed up and slow down the time of the game. Uh, the floor lets you, uh, lets you see how, uh, not how, sorry, but it lets you see inside of a building in different layers. There actually is a vertical scale to this game or a vertical environment, so you can go up and down different floors in a building. Let's run downstairs, not downstairs. I'm, I'm, up, I'm obsessed with up and down right now. Let's go into the city, and I'll show you what the up and down floor level looks like. So we're going to run into town here. Notice that we're still using the shadow icon, so everyone's kind of running at the same speed. Okay, let's go into a bar, because I know the bar should be open. Oh, this just opened up. Let's go in here. Okay, so right now we're seeing the first level, or the, the zero level, the floor level of this building. And now that we're inside, we can go either page up or click this button here to see the other floors in the building. So this is how you'd be able to click over here to give your characters orders to run upstairs. Page up, page down, and there we go. So what else do we have here? This is the build menu. Uh, again, this might be something more that we look at during another video where we're dedicated to building a new base. However, one useful thing that you can do when you're out and about with your squad is to build a campfire. Now, you can't place it next to your city, or any city. It will turn blue, but it will turn green when it, you're kind of outside the protective range. 
A campfire lets you cook any raw food you find, like raw meat. So that's a great way to make a couple of like cooked pieces of meat for your characters to eat. The rest of this I'm going to cover later in another video because you're not going to be building too soon unless you've started with the builders. I think it's the... Uh, I can't remember the start right now, but it's the one where you start with five folks and some building materials. Let's look at some of these other menu options. We have a standard inventory where you're able to see your character's weight, what they're currently look like. Disguise is interesting because as you pick up items that represent a certain faction, you'll have a chance of disguising yourself as that faction. We'll cover that possibly in a later time. It might just be something you might want to explore on your own. I don't want to spoil just everything. So our character has a ninja blade that was stolen, it was picked up off a dead ninja, and a couple pieces of equipment on them. If you have a backpack, you can actually pick open bag, uh, and it'll kind of expand your inventory. When you press I and you have a backpack on, it normally does open up by default. The fact that you have two weapons here, this is the weapon that will be used if your character is down to one arm. So if I have a character who has a nice big chopper, let's in fact, let's trade with Tobel here. Where are you at, Thumper? You and Tobel, come up here. We'll show you guys as an example. Okay, I want Thumper to give her sword to Tobel, so I'm going to choose her first, hold right-click, and trade with Tobel. Okay, I want you to give your sword to Tobel. So you can see here now that Tobel has a big sword on his back, and he's got a little sword on his hip. So, by default, when Tobel starts to fight, he will fight with weapon number one. However, if he gets incapacitated to the point where he can only use one weapon. If his right arm gets destroyed or his left arm gets destroyed, they will go to weapon slot number two. So it's not always important to have this. However, if you do play the game in, in, to a point where you don't save scum, you don't you know load the game back over after you've maybe had a bad fight. If you really want them to fight with their you know with all their tools available, then you'll want to get include a weapon here in slot number two so they have something to fall back on if they you know their arm doesn't necessarily get chopped off, but if it becomes disabled due to injury. Limbs is something I've not actually explored, and I think limbs is going to let you look at your prosthetics. You can lose limbs in this game, and by the same token, you can actually uh, attach prosthetics to your character to return them to some level of functionality. And there are different quality limbs. Some of them, I believe, are better than your standard regular human flesh limb. So Arrange will automatically try to sort things in your inventory to give you the most available space. And that's roughly it in the terms of the inventory menu. The stats or the status window shows you an overview of your character's attributes as well as their skills. Uh, if you hover over any of these, it does tell you what the kind of, it, it's really nice. It tells you how to uh, increase that skill and also what's affected by that stat. So this is a great way to, excuse me, uh, a great way to go through the game and kind of do a little bit of self-learning is to hover over all of these items and find out a little bit more about what they do and how to level them up. So if you're interested in lockpicking or an assassination, go ahead and read those sections and find out how to level those up. The map, of course, is an overall map of the game. I hope you didn't mind that a couple buildings were re revealed there. But this is, um, where are we at, actually? I should zoom back this way. There's our little blue triangle. So we're over here in Squin, which is a Shek city. So on the map, when you do open the map, by the way, you can hit most of these other tabs by clicking on the different buttons. Uh, faction is a tab that shows you your relations with all the other factions in the game. I don't want to send uh, and spoiler any other factions or anything you might want to encounter, so we're going to skip that for the moment and head over right over to Research. Research is more of a faction building area than anything else, so you We'll do this once you start to build up your faction. There's also ways to focus on just doing research without having to start building your base, and I can cover that as well in the base building video. At its basic level, you need a technology bench or a research bench installed somewhere, and you need to put books in it. Books are unique things that are sold by um, kind of a mix of vendors. It's not one particular vendor. You can find them out and about in the world and you can also buy them from most vendors in the game. So here is a research artifact book. It costs about 300 cats, so it's not terribly expensive. You definitely can afford a couple to get you started if you, uh, if you build up your income. Okay, so we've looked at the research window, the squad window. 
Uh, the help win window is kind of a consolidated list of all the tutorials in the game. When you first do start up the game, by the way, there is a set of tutorials that will run along the left side of your screen, and some of them will only come up during a certain situation. So you've been KO'd, what happens? And it'll actually pop up here on the left side as an information panel. So I would highly encourage you, if this is your first playthrough, to go ahead and follow along with these tutorials on the left. They're very informative and they're self-paced. So if, when something happens to you, it's you're able to just look at it at that point. Okay, so that's roughly uh, everything that you need to start moving your characters around and understanding some of the game. I know I didn't go into as much detail as I was hoping for on head, stomach, chest, and arm and this kind of a thing. So I think what I'm going to do is make that a separate video because this has gone on for a little bit now. So I might have a separate video all about combat. So in the combat video, I'm going to cover how damage is applied to your character, how to recover, and uh, what all the different types of damages mean. That makes a little bit more sense to me right now uh, because you've already gone through a lot on the uh, this first video, or this uh, second video actually, in the tutorial series. So, I hope that was informational and useful for you. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to address them as soon as I can. If you'd like to see another type of video created or a different question answered, please let me know as well, and I'll definitely endeavor to make a video covering that particular item. I do apologize if I skipped over any pieces of information. There are some things I've glossed over, uh, mostly because they're a little bit more in-depth and out of the scope of this quick tutorial video, and I will probably cover them in a full-on Let's Play series down the road. So that's going to be something I'd like to do. That way I can talk through my decision-making process and you know maybe talk about athletics XP, strength XP, and how to utilize those to the most effect. And again, part of my, a lot of my experience in the game is just I've been playing the game for so long. Sometimes you don't notice when new things crop up or when uh, old procedures change or things have been patched out or added in. So if I've missed something, please let me know. And that way I can go back and make a little notation to make sure the information is as accurate as possible for your fellow viewers. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative and I hope you continue to enjoy this Kenshi tutorial series.